so let me ask how how did you get involved in doing art for for magic cards was it just a, a commission thing that you just submitted to or were were you kind of recruited by them how how did that work um it was a very random thing because a lady was down in brighton commissioning a friend of mine via another friend and i just happened to be in the room ne next door and i know that i probably wasn't even going to be going into work that day so my mate said you know why don't you go and see john and i didn't know what magic the gathering was you know i sort of held it at healthy arm's length because i hadn't heard of of, of the game so i was quite laid back about being commissioned and she saw my work, and um, that was 17 years ago, or 18 years ago, and I've been doing it on and off ever since. <laughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful, random chance thing, and it's, uh, it's, it's lovely that it happened that way, because it just found me, and I'm still doing it. I'm just a bit older and more grey. <laughs> <The, laughs> uh, is there any um, type of card that that you enjoy or do you just enjoy it all like is there anyone that you a type of card that you enjoy more than another kind for example or do you just enjoy drawing um that's a, a yes and no question it often depends on my state of mind at the time or where where i'm at if i'm feeling a little bit dark in myself which is often in the winter time and i'm feeling a bit more grumpy and not too well i'll probably enjoy doing a nasty, evil-looking swamp, mm. because it's quite a cathartic thing to paint something that's a little bit evil-looking, so the painting becomes a cathartic thing. And then um, there are times when I would just really enjoy painting forests, mm. because it sounds like a cliche that us artists go out into nature and are inspired by the form of the trees. Mm. and old days I'd always think people were being a bit arty-farty, saying things like that, but it literally is true. You know, I, I go out into the forests with my wife or with my camera and I, I not only enjoy the vibe of what I see, I can see little shapes that make me want to turn them into something else. In fact, the cover of my book is actually based on some roots which I'd walked past for the last year, so I photograph them and then use them as inspiration to create what is the cover of the book. So, um, but I do love painting landscapes primarily because if I'm sitting here at my computer, um, obviously there are parts of the day where I'm just feeling a little bit tired and a bit, you know, and if I'm painting a scene, I can literally disappear into what I'm doing, whereas if I'm painting a figure, which is there, or a, or a mon monster, which I don't do very often, it's a little bit more of a claustrophobic technique. So it literally is like a landscape you can disappear into, if that makes sense. Sure. How much direction do you get when you get commissioned for something um, like a land? Do, do, now I'm sure you've earned your keep, where they're, they're probably a little more, you know, hey, do what you do. But how much direction do they give? Because there's a lot of people, for example, a lot of my subscribers are um, artists, and I am the opposite of that. I, I, I believe being able to draw things is is a gift. It's not a skill that you can really – I mean, you can get better at it, but I, a guy like me can draw every day and you know, maybe go from being a 2 out of 10 to a 3. And mm -hmm. so a lot of – Artists, or I, I talk to a lot of people who are artists. I'm sure they'd be interested. Um, I kind of went on a tangent there. Mixed two questions together. Sorry. So the the direction <laughs> when, when when they come to you, um, you know, how much direction do you get, or are they just kind of, you know, hey, you're the artist, you do your thing. Okay. Um, the type of art direction and the professionalism and the specificness that I work to now is actually even more specific than it was 17 years ago. In fact, in the old days, I could pretty much just say, can you paint three mountains? 
four or three forests, and I could literally paint within whatever I wanted uh, that. Now we have a style guide, and it's as tightly art-directed as ever, and whether I be John Avon or the new kid on the block, I still have to earn my keep, and um, I have to follow the guidelines. But it's a very... I realise getting the text together for this book, that one of the advantages about being a commercial illustrator as opposed to being a fine artist where you can basically do whatever you want is that for 30 years I've been, I've worked within a, within the constraints of the brief. And um, looking back, if, you, if you've been told to do that and you have to operate within that, you have freedom within the boundary of there to operate. If you go beyond that boundary, you're taking risks. Because I have to earn a living, if I do something a bit wild and wacky, it might come back and they'll say, I'm sorry, Don, that looks very interesting, but it doesn't conform to the style guide. So I have to stay within the bounds of all that. But that's where we have the freedom to express ourselves. So like with the Ravnica set, we're, we're, we're looking at the style of the particular types of buildings. So they give us a direction, then we can be free within that. And that is actually quite a nice thing to do. It's like a field where you can operate within, as opposed to going off the horizon line and just going completely mad. <laughs> so it actually helps being given a brief. Sure, sure, that makes sense. And I know lots of artists who, um, when they go to do their own work, they find it really hard because because they can do whatever they want, they can indulge, and then because there's no deadline, they find it really hard to contain their own imagination. So paradoxically, the style guide is a really great thing. And that was a very long answer to your question. No, it's per it's perfect. This is this is great. This is great stuff. Um, so, is there are there? So I I pulled the the masses of for some questions and um, most of them that came back were not great but the um, it seems like a lot of people are curious if well a lot of them is I know enough about I, I talked I mentioned earlier the great respect I have for art you know artistry not just drawing but musically you know if I was interviewing my favorite band I would never ask Tell me about your how you write songs. Tell me about your process because that's you know that's the the piece of it I think that is difficult because everybody's unique and that and that's kind of your um, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a difficult question to answer. But uh, one thing a lot of people ask is if there was a particular piece. In the, within Magic the Gathering, I know you, you draw lots of other things. Are there particular pieces of art that are near and dear to you? Ones that maybe you like a lot but aren't as uh, iconic as full art Zendikar lands, or you know, th is there something that you've done that you, that you just is kind of like your favorite, but maybe yeah. other people don't know. <laughs> Well, not so much other people don't know. I got stuck on my wall here. I'll just hold it up to the camera. Okay. That, that is the return to Ravnica uh, Forest, which actually is basically green buildings. So the reason, the only way I can answer your question is again, it'll vary so much to where I am at that particular point in my life. But the overall answer is that there are times when. Um, I'm working, and again, I'll use my hands as an example. I am nice and centered, and I'm able to tune into what I'm trying to do. There's other times when my brain is all like this, so it's all a bit of a mishmash, and it sort of comes out, and I hope that goes through. And Whereas when I did that card, plus a lot of the other returns to Ravnica, I had a very strict not strict, a very um, distinct vision in my head and um, it just c comes to me and what I do is I, I draw thumbnail sketches then I go on the internet and I randomly look at inspiration and I sort of put it all together and it just happens. 
And it sounds like a really corny thing to say that it comes through me. And again, the older I've learned is that, like if you're a musician or a writer or an artist, you become a portal for it to happen through. And this sounds very zen and very um, like I'm being arty farty, but I'm not, because there are times when you're just in tune with what's happening. And I'm drawing away, and I'm, I'm quite surprised at what I'm looking at, because I'm thinking, oh. And I, and I realized that card I've just shown you, um, a lot of people ask me these kinds of questions, that's based on a kind of dream I had after my father died, quite about 10 years ago, where I just saw all this stuff in the background, this mishmash of architecture and these lines going through. And I realized when I was painting this, I was painting something that I'd already seen in a, in a dream. Hmm. And uh, again, this sounds rather like I'm making this up, but I'm not. And I kind of don't really care whether people think I'm making it up, because it is the way it is. Yeah. You see, your subconscious stores all this stuff, and it just comes out in blobs every now and then when you're in tune with what you're trying to do. And sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's a real struggle, and I'm sitting here on a Monday morning having to do something, and that's where being a professional artist is where you just somehow by the end of the day get something sent off by email because you just have to do it there's other times when it's just oh christ this is amazing yeah and, and i'm amazed at not so much that i think what i'm doing is good i'm just amazed at what comes through sure that i mean i, I can imagine it, it even though it's obviously something you love and you have passion for it can be a grind uh, at at times. Well, just, every job has that. Yeah. Um, There's no in the world who has a job that isn't sometimes a grind. You know, you could be the most famous pop star in the world and you're on stage having to say, play that bloody song again. Yeah, yeah. It's my absolutely hate. So let me ask um, maybe just w one more question and then we'll go into something different. Um, so this, this might be uh, less of a stock question that you probably get asked. I was very concerned about what I was going to ask you because I'm sure I didn't want to ask you the same exact questions that you always get when, for example, you might be signing art at a magic event or something like that. But then I was kind of thinking, well, you probably get asked the same questions because lots of people just want to know these things. And um, if uh, if you're not drawing for magic cards, what kind of what kind of things do you like to draw? What kind of things do you like to, you know, when you want to go decompress, but still mm. do your you know do your craft? What do you mm. do you like to draw? Um, what I'll often do because I'm sitting here with a digital drawing tablet, I will often, if I was wanting to do even more art after a whole day of doing art. <laughs> um, no, 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 but, but that is a good question because there are times where I just want to draw. I just draw creatures and weird little, they're like doodles that turn into monsters and little machines and strange buildings. And I don't elevate them up to drawings. They're just free form expression of where my head is at that time. And some of it looks really, really bad and I'd never show it to anybody. And just occasionally I'll think, ooh, and I'll try to make it look a bit more tasteful and pretty. And I've got various sketchbooks of this stuff, and some of it will probably go in the book, some of it will never go in the book because it looks incredibly bad. <laughs> but, it's, but it's kind of like me just um, subconsciously making marks. And when I first went to on my foundation here in Cardiff in 1979, my tutor said that everything is just about making marks on paper. And the, the weird thing is, though I draw by hand, I scan them in. So I'm basically, these days, most of my work is digital. I sometimes just want to make marks. So, and sometimes I'll be out having a coffee with my wife and we'll grab a, a napkin, literally, and a ballpoint pen, and I'll just draw a weird looking blobby tree. But it's because I want to go through the process of making marks. 
but some of it looks really bad and some of it's fine and that's just how it is sure so tell me about um journeys to somewhere else how did you you know come up with the idea that you wanted to do this and um you know how did you arrive at the kickstarter and um I guess maybe just tell me about journeys to somewhere else. We'll, we'll keep it narrow, and um, okay. we'll see. We'll go from there. Okay. So the book, the reason why we called it Journeys to Somewhere Else is because um, when I'm working, I'm literally somewhere else. You know, it's like um, I I can think and worry when I'm painting, but if I'm really in the zone, I am just in the artwork. So I'm literally somewhere else. So we just thought, well, that's a pretty nice title for a book. Sure. Um, um, in all honesty, if I would have put a book together ten years ago, I probably would have always felt I hadn't quite yet done enough work that I'd be prepared to put in a book because I don't. I probably would have thought I wouldn't have had enough good stuff to use that simple phrase. Whereas now I think there is enough to go into a book. And then when I, this book, which is on the Kickstarter, literally this one came out in 1984. So that's literally 30 years, years ago. And it's got my name on the back in tiny letters. Yeah. So 30 years of doing this crazy thing. And it just feels the right time to do it because I'm, I'm at the age where, how can I put it? There are other things I'd like to do as well, and I'm in the privileged position of being able to have a great team of people who are helping me. My my business partner, Guy, who's an amazing person, he's driving the business side of this, and we've got a great designer friend, David O'Connor, who I've known for a long time, and it just feels the right thing to do. And we've had a few meetings, and we looked at my artwork, and there's just tons of stuff. <laughs> and the exciting thing is I keep coming across bits and I've actually just only a couple of days ago found my very first ever oil painting. So, wow, look at uh, that. Threes, yes. Yeah. And that's like really, and one of the nice things when you dig in the dirt and you go through your drawers and you pull out all the, all the weird stuff and the photographs and the photo shoots, you realise that... Um, well, in my case, there is actually a reasonably interesting s story to tell. And that's why the word journey comes into it, because I'm going to be being very honest about what I go through to do this, not in a morbid way, but just the truth of being a jobbing artist, making a living out of painting pictures. So. The, yeah, and by the way, congratulations on being, I think... Uh, you are currently the best performing art Kickstarter running on. Is that it, still accurate? It's we're now the third in oh. the entire world. <laughs> 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 I know, and that's absolutely um, um, outstanding. I mean, I assume this is true. I mean, I'm just clicking. I've just been told these things, and I'm clicking on buttons, but it, it appears to be that, and I can't believe this. But it's all great. No, I'm. I'm staggered, so it's an, it's a wonderfully exciting and very scary thing. Well, I could tell you as someone who went through uh, the entire Kickstarter page and and everything, you know, the book itself is for me like an inst. You know, I it, there's no question that I that I would want it in my collection. And by the way, I'm going to put the link in the description below because you have one of the deepest and most interesting lists of um like uh what would you call them rewards that i've ever mm. seen um you know, yeah i mean i think that is definitely one of the most interesting thing if things if people want to just go hey i want to basically pre-order a copy of the book they can do mm. that they're going to buy it anyway why not you know help it happen um mm. but some of the some of the more in, you know the the other uh, pledge rewards are really interesting. I've noticed you've sold, you know, some of your original pieces of art or some lithographs and some sketches. And um, people, people ask, a lot of people ask, you know, how can I get 
an original piece from you. Well, mm. if there's any left on Kickstarter, that's that's one place they can go. Mm, definitely. The uh, we only have uh, about twenty five days left. Is that right? July twentieth is the end of it. Yeah. So I 26th. think. Yeah, mm. we're um, looking very close to uh, getting. So hopefully, you guys out there who are watching this interview. Um, you know, I'm going to put a link in the description below where you can go check out everything that's going to be in this book, which, um, you know, hey, it's John Avon. I mean, if, if, if you like art, if you like magic, you like either one of those two things or you like mm -hmm. them both, it seems like a, a pretty good <laughs> a pretty good thing to have on your bookshelf. Um, mm -hmm. Let me ask, how have you started going through what, pieces you want to have in the book? Yes, and it's incredibly hard because um, there are some images that, in all honesty, I don't really want to go in the book because I know they could be so much better, <laughs> but they're well-known pieces, and my agent says, no, John, that's got to go in the book. It's it's a well-known piece, and I'm going, okay, go in the book. <laughs> and I just accept that now because um, I'll probably be wanting to apologize for the painting and the text below, but I just it's just is what was you know, like my first my first commissions many many years ago. I look back at them and I sort of think, oh, that wasn't very good. But then that's how it was then, and yeah. we're having a chronological year towards the top. So towards the top, you anyway, at the top of the page, you'll see as the years go by. Hopefully, I've got a bit more skilled, mm -hmm. and um, obviously some. But one of the exciting things that I wanted to say about the book is that the um, reason why we're trying to push the book at this stage is that um, if people wanted to order the book now, it's just quite a lot cheaper than if they bought it after the event. So oh, this, right. This really is the cheapest time, cheapest time, is that right? Yeah, that's The most right. economical time to buy the book. And also it helps us to be able to make the whole thing happen. But yeah, yeah going, back to, going back to your question, it's going to be quite a challenge because the book would be very, very big if I had to put everything in there. But we will get there. It's, it's a nice problem to have, having too much art. Well, I'm sure the, the cringeworthy um, paintings that are in there for you I mean, that, that's all part of the journey, too, right? I think that's that kind of thing is very interesting to someone like me, that you want to watch the evolution. And, um, you know, maybe you'll just have to skip those pages when you're when you're looking through it. Yes. <laughs> well, when I show them to my mum, I'll just stick those page, pages together with blue tack. Oh, oh. Yep, whoops. <laughs> but, but there's going to be all kinds of things. Like, um, I just discovered my very, very first ever... So, so surreal painting, which is that which I wow. did when I was at school. And the reason why I'm just showing you this is that I remember I was sitting in the class and I discovered Salvador Dali, and um, I just thought, uh, I'm going to do something really mad, but very, very real. So I just basically painted toothpaste being squirted into a building. <laughs> That's the direction, literally, from this painting, that's the direction my career went, because the idea of doing something normal just doesn't seem a tenable thing, because normal to me is, can get a bit on the boring side. I imagine. To go, to go a bit wild and to be paid to be a bit strange is great. I can't thank you enough for your time. I know I'm catching you at the end of your day, and, um, you know, I, I'm, I hope that the subscribers out there... Um, take a minute to check out the Kickstarter for John Avon Journeys to Somewhere Else. Like he said, if you're even at all interested in the book, now's a great time to, to get it, right? Because it's going to be more expensive on the shelf. So, John, anything um, maybe coming up for us Magic the Gathering players that we might uh, keep our eyes open for? And, uh, any John Avon art coming up in any recent sets or anything uh, in the future? Um, there are going to be three basic lands coming up, when, I don't know, and um, there will be an exciting announcement about something which I just can't, well, it's exciting to me, but I'm not allowed to say, because <laughs> it's, it's, um, 
it's strange because I've learnt over the years by being professional. There, are, you have to you have to do things in a certain way because that's the way business works. Yeah. And um, um, again, it's this box thing where you're allowed to talk about a certain amount, and beyond that, um, it's, you just have to be professional and sh- shut up. So that's <laughs> a terrible answer, isn't it? Well, we uh, have we have a little we we have a little. You know, there are a lot of people in this uh, in, who play magic who like to speculate, and so we have a little something to speculate on. And mm. uh, we also know now that we may see some lands coming up soon, which uh, everyone loves. And mm. um, again, I want to I want to thank you for for taking the time today. Um, please, guys out there, check out his Kickstarter. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed talking to uh, Mr. Avon here, mm. and. Um, Okay. Yeah, that, that'll be it. And I'll wave goodbye from sunny England. <laughs> okay, all right. Yes, all right. Nice talking to you. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, check out some of our most popular playlists from MTG vlogs, sick gameplay videos, new product breaks, and some insane vintage openings. I upload three to four new Magic the Gathering videos every week. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to crush that subscribe button to join one of the fastest growing Magic the Gathering channels on YouTube. Talk to you later.